welcome to Rackin Lab 1040, Finding Orphaned AWS Instances. The objective of this lab is to discover AWS instances that are created outside of Digital Rebar and pull them into Digital Rebar. And the business ROI is to get improved operational control and consistency of all of your infrastructure by being able to create an accurate inventory and watch for systems that are orphaned or created outside of your infrastructure as code system. As a prerequisite, we need to have at least one cloud broker installed, and we need some AWS instances running that we can detect. These should be ones that are created outside of Digital Rebar, otherwise we will just identify them as already being under management. Uh, and of course, you need to have access to your AWS infrastructure. So when you look at our system, this is uh, the system that we left over from Lab 1030. We have a cluster running where we've been building on top of the Lab 1020 infrastructure. We've provisioned a machine here. These are the machines from Lab 1020. And you'll remember that 1030, we removed this from Amazon, but uh, we still have a reference to it in Digital Rebar, and that's perfectly fine. The other thing I want to point out here is that this uh, Digital Rebar instance is actually running in Amazon, and we can tell that by looking at the cloud provider here. This is discovered during the bootstrap process, both uh, the provider and the instance ID of the system. Those instance IDs are important, and we, we actually discover them as part of this process. And you can see it up here where we're actually looking at our bootstrapping wizard. We know what cloud uh, you're working on through that process. That's actually where we go to determine it. And this system already has some data and statistics that we can look at. And those are the basic steps that we want in step one. So for step two of this lab, we're going to go ahead and create a resource broker for our AWS CLI. In this case, the system is not using the Terraform broker, where we can only really create or detect drift against Terraform. We're using the AWS CLI to run CLI operations. Drift detection is not the only thing you can do against the CLI, but it certainly is a good basic item to be able to list infrastructure items in AWS and then pull them back into the system. And we have a resource broker wizard set up that makes this easy. You'll notice it uses the AWS CLI runner. That is a container that contains the AWS CLI for operations. We're going to set up a basic broker and we need to include our secret and access keys. So I'm going to go ahead and paste those in for my credentials. Those are in your .AWS credentials file. So that we've put in our secret information. We're going to need our AWS region. This is, needs to be what matches your credentials and where you want to scan. The limitation of drift detection is that you can only scan one region at a time. We're going to go, we use the default region here and I'm going to keep that. And then if I needed to SSH into things, I would need to set my key user for Amazon. Different clouds have different key user requirements. Set my icons to be something interesting and go ahead and save this resource broker. You'll notice it's going to go through the uh, build process and start the pipeline to build the broker. This one took a second because this is the first time we've used this AWS CLI broker in the system. And it's just running through a normal process. Once again, we're not testing that the credentials work here. We are simply uh, building the process and getting into work order mode so we can issue instructions against it. Now that we have the broker created, we want to open up the broker, uh, make sure that it is in work order mode, and then select the blueprint AWS Cloud Reconcile Instances. If I go ahead and say apply here, we're going to run this blueprint. You can go ahead and check on its progress. It's super fast. Let's look at this work order. From the work order, we can see that we ran the scan to uh, the task to scan instances and actually watch the output of what's going on. So here we can see that running the AWS CLI has detected that there was a missing instance. It's creating the machine and then storing the output. We're going to go check on that in a second. If we scroll down, we should find, because this machine is running in AWS, that we actually have determined that we have, and there's a lot of data, that we have found a matching one. Here we go. Here's another instance. And it found the matching instance. This will happen for all of the machines that we have running in Digital Rebar. These, since they're created with Digital Rebar, have the critical cloud instance ID and, and provider for that system to match. One of them didn't match, and that one has been created in Digital Rebar. 
All these others are known Amazon instances, or in the case of this one, one that only exists in digital rebar and will get cleaned up by Terraform as it runs through the process. If we drill into the machine that was discovered, you'll notice it starts with a distinctive icon and locked because we don't actually have control and it is in non-runnable mode. Remember, this machine was discovered. There's no runner on that system. If we look at the parameters, you'll see that we've captured all of the information that Amazon knows about this system. And that means that we can go through and potentially log in, connect, and attach to those existing systems, if, or at least figure out exactly where they are and what region and how they're configured. And if I was to look at Amazon here and remove our filter, you would see that this is exactly what we have going on. We have our instance IDs, we have the digital rebar I'm running on, and our lab components this one being the terminated one. Now we want to visit the alerts page and see that part of this drift discovery was also an alert that told us that we had a new system discovered. And in that alert, we're able to come back through and see all of the information that we found an unregistered machine and we know exactly what its ID. This allows us to go track back um, the information that was created. And one thing that is worth noting in alerts is alerts often create additional information that you can use to figure out exactly what happened and where. So in this case, if we follow through to the machine that we created, we can jump from the alert directly into the machine and find out what happened. From an automation perspective, that allows me to take an alert, watch for that type of alert, and then drill into the machine that was created. And the system will create one alert for each machine. This concludes all of the UX components for this lab. However, I do want to take a moment and show you how it would work with the CLI and if we were to build this same broker using the CLI. So we're going to go back through to our resource brokers, make sure we don't have a naming conflict. AWS CLI broker looks great. And we're going to go ahead and create the resource broker using the CLI. So here we are going to go ahead and build that uh, component. You'll notice it's a resource brokers create with the AWS CLI. And in this case, we've gone ahead and pulled the secret key and the key ID directly from our AWS credentials file. It was really that simple to build this. And we have uh, sample scripts that do that. You'll notice here is the AWS CLI that we've already built. And I could run this same process from this newly created broker um, if I wanted. Now that we've created our AWS CLI broker through the CLI, now we actually want to be able to start that next work order using the CLI itself. In this case, we're going to use the command uh, resource brokers work order add the name of our broker, which is AWS CLI, and then run the cloud AWS CLI reconcile instances blueprint just like we did from the UX. When we do that, it's going to go ahead and queue that work order up and execute it. You can see it's already gone through and completed in the background. So from that perspective, I've been able to do all of the things I showed you in the UX with simple CLI commands uh, that operate and automate. And of course, if you had reviewed lab 1030, you would see that we can also create triggers that put this on a timer and automatically detect and discover things. And because they generate alerts, we can then go through and do additional alerts. We do have a lab uh, 1050, which will create an alert when content is updated. And we have additional labs that show you how to send and forward messages on alerts into Slack so that you can get notified in other systems. Uh, Slack is a great example one to go through. Hope this lab was helpful. Please take time to uh, run the next lab, 1050, which will show you how to create an alert, or to look through doing things like creating a custom UI button, lab 2010, or doing the Slack notification, lab 2020. Thank you.